we have one last scroll to do. And that's the more difficult to do because this is kind of like a kind of a two-dimensional scroll. Uh, it's scrolled in two dimensions, twisted and scrolls at, scrolled at the same time. Uh, the end is tapered. It has a, has a ridge here in the middle. And it's scrolled and twisted 90 degrees at the same time. So you get a scroll that's looking bigger. It's almost like the uh, uh, halfpenny uh, scroll, but this time the, the twist is not at one point. It is over a, uh, a length of maybe two inches or something. The exact dimensions are easy to see on the on the drawing that uh, Russ has provided. I show you the steps again here, and then the video how it's done. You start with the same straight piece. You do a one-sided taper here. It's kind of like a short taper. Uh, I think this was about two inches from here. Uh, don't nail me down on that. I just don't have the number on my head right now. Anyway, you, you do this taper, uh, then you bend this over to the straight side, show this here. And I did a couple of tests and I got to, this needs to be bent over about a three quarter of, a total bend, so it's 270 degrees. Then you start beveling the inside uh, with a uh, rounded hammer. I, I have two rounding hammers, and I use the smaller one for this. And as you can see here, while you do that, it opens up a little bit. But then you turn to the outside, and it curls in again. And you work this inside outside until you work out a nice clean ridge in the middle here. And then you twist this and scroll it at the same time to get about this shape here. A little more detail. Let's go over it again. Create a one-sided taper, curl in over the straight side. Uh, this might need a couple trials. It I, it took me two. The first time I didn't curl it enough, and then after I was done, the whole thing was too wide to fit the drawing. So the next one I curled in more. This is kind of this is straight. This is ninety degrees. This is one eighty. This is two seventy, and that worked for me. Then you bevel the inside. Then you bevel the outside. I usually don't go all the way when I do the inside. And then I do one, one, uh, one times around and just slightly uh, don't go all the way. And then I go inside, outside, inside, outside until I got my ridge exactly where I want it. You can take your time with it. It doesn't really uh, matter if it takes a little longer. Then we, the compound bend is really hard to, to explain, but it's pretty easy to see on the, on the video how it's done. And then it's again hard to really do. Uh, the the uh, bevel scroll on the level three grill actually is easier to do than this one, I have the feeling because it's a little bigger and it, the compound band is easier to do. Uh, if you don't, if you are not able to do the compound bend over the horn of the anvil in one go, uh, that is not really a big deal. Uh, you can always correct what you did uh, with, with bending forks. And that way you have better control. That's at least how I do it. And I show you a little video here, how this is 
then this is kind of a final here. Okay, a short taper. You really have to start at the very tip, otherwise you don't get it taper that that short and you need to hit it hard, correct? For the width, uh, for the thickness of the stock, sorry. And try to taper in that one dimension and keep the thickness the same everywhere. There we are. This is about the shape you're going for. Then you hit this. I need to work on the base of my anvil. You see that it's moving if I hit it from the side. But it worked. Just took me one heat more because the anvil was giving. Turn it over, curl it in a little more. Now you can get, go to the to the flat side. It's moved a little bit out of view here, but I guess you you get the idea what I'm doing here. Curl it in. I straighten the lower part back out again. All right, there we are. On the next picture, will you see the, the whole shape? Or on the reflection, you see it. And what I did here is once I had my first try and then the second try, I marked it uh, on a piece of uh, Let's do this first here. Do the inside, be very careful. Don't need to go all the way. Just, just give it a good, good beginning. And then when you come to the outside, uh, you give that a beginning and then you start seeing the ridge in the middle and you can play with that and move it a little outside, a little inside until it's where you want it to be. Uh, I realized that it's very easy to hammer scale into, into these ridges, and it doesn't look very nice. That's why I cleaned it extra nice uh, before I started on the outside. Here you see the, no, no, before you could see a little bit uh, that there were still two lines going around, and you can slowly move those two lines until you just have one left in the middle. I'm going on the outside here. Now you see there it's nice here. I need to work on the tip. And of course here it's still wide open. Take one more heat, clean it off. Sometimes it's good to wait a little bit until the heat goes out of it a little bit. You're not moving much, so it doesn't really need to be very hot, but you see much better if it's getting into the reds. Yeah, even on the video, you can you can see where the ridge is. Okay, there we are. Probably nil here, it needs a little bit. So and here is how I do the compound bend. Always keep the stock 90 degrees to the horn. My anvil has a pretty thick horn. That's why I made this uh, little extra anvil here with a thinner horn uh, that I clamped in the vise. So well, this is what I end up with. So it's it's kind of going in the right, right direction, but it's not quite where it should be. And then I take my bending forks and and do the rest of it. It still needs a little bit more. 
Uh, some people do this with a with a mallet, uh, with a, a rawhide mallet. Uh, I I never had good luck with that rawhide mallet because it's too light. And if it's so light, then I can't hit it hard enough. So I use my use a small hammer, and I try to not hit the ridge. I try to hit always either the uh, one side or the other side. Uh, of the of the of the ridge, and then it works better with a hammer. But that's for me. You have to figure out what works best for you. Maybe you're better with a mallet. I know Mark Asprey uses a mallet, but there there we are. There's it's not not clean yet, but with with that little. U shape or the plant bending fork, you can still get this in the right shape. And again, here, uh, if you are turning where the ridge is, make sure that the edges of your bending fork don't hit on the ridge. Then you get an indentation there and you never get that out again. Thank you. <laughs>